everyone, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another episode of Will's Trip Down Memory Lane. This week, we're doing HHN 2018. As you guys know the style of these videos already, I intro them, I'll throw in a little commentary, but it's all Will, man. I want to hear Will's experiences. Obviously, you've guys seen our experiences through the channel and everything, uh, and we've met up with Will a couple times at HHN the last couple of years, and you know... You've seen him on the channel before, but now we want to hear what his years were like. Uh, obviously, he had a, a, a killer 2017, and that was his debut year going to the event. Now we're going to take it to 2018, where I'm assuming, Will, you went a little bit more than 2017. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, so, Will, 2018, man, um, not so bad year right there, actually. So why don't you tell us about your experiences with 2018? All right, 2018, man, where do I even like start? Uh, 2018 was when I, I, you know, I figured my shit out and I, un, I was able to recognize what Horror Nights like really meant to me, you know? And I was like, th this is a whole brand new ballpark. And I was into it and I knew. And, uh, you know, you know, starting, I'm just going to start a few months out, you know? I, kept up to date on those, uh, on those, you know, the second it came out, I had Horror Nights Twitter notifications on and I was like in the middle of English class at school. Like I remember this so well, it was like second period English class and uh, you know, like 9.45 in the morning, get the notification, Stranger Things. And I was like, wait, Stranger Things, let's see. You're right, that was the first one. In, like Stranger Things, it's like, holy shit <laughs> stranger things like that's so sick uh and then uh you know just keeping track uh, everything you know increasingly getting more excited for it and then i was you know way more uh present with like uh you know keeping up to date with like you know i started following you guys and tlev and getting really into it and uh and stuff like that and uh, just excitement kept mounting and uh you know then the day came i met up with a few friends who i'd met through the event uh sub grace and warren um and uh, you know it was uh, it was nice to have you know those people with me who are also big fans of the event and you know we went and we got our early entry wristbands it was like you know bright and early we got there at like 4 30 you know bright and early but um uh, sun's still out, still bright. That's bright in uh, HHN. Bright and early for <laughs> HHN terms. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we got our wristbands and of course we're like speed walking, which eventually turned into like a sprint to the stairs, totally ditched the, uh, uh, ditched the uh, escalators and we just sprinted down, you know, got to develop a whole new step and technique just to <laughs> keep up with how fast you're going down the stairs. And, uh, you know, we ran, we had this whole game plan mapped out of how we could hit each of the mazes in the shortest amount of time possible. Stranger Things, you know, get amped up with the soundtrack. I came out and I was like, all right, <laughs> you know, a little bit of a, you know, it wasn't the worst, wasn't the best, but I was like, you know what? It's all right, we're having fun, hanging out. And, you know, this was my first time ever seeing uh, my favorite view in the whole fucking world uh, at like sundown-ish coming out of Toxic Tunnel before the, like, you know, before they roll out the scare actors and everything and looking out onto that valley, like uh, <laughs> landscape with the hills in the back, just gorgeous and i know that's not super spooky or anything but that's really one of my favorite things about the event is just like i'm on the universal back lot like i'm not in a train like my feet are on the ground this is like this is where shit's going down you know and uh I i'd gotten a bit more uh you know affluent and with horror movies and i you know i knew kind of what was going on and uh I rewatched like Back to the Future. I was like, oh shit, you know, Hill Valley Square right over there. And I was a bit more like, you know, I, I actually went to Universal, uh, I think nine times in the year between, you know, which coming from 
last time I went was, you know, we talked about it in the last episode, two years old, <laughs> HHN 2017, and then like 10 times, uh, you know, got the cheapest season pass. And I was just always fucking out there. Um, and uh, just, and then we walked straight down and next maze, poltergeist. Oh my fucking God, I was not ready. Nothing could have prepared that maze just you know walking out there and then seeing that uh, amazing facade just perfect like downscaled recreation of that house you know i'd watched this movie in preparation and fallen in love that's my favorite movie of all time and i was like yo it's the poltergeist house they did it they did it so well you know i'd seen the construction photos but seeing it in person was a whole new thing um and uh, you know, walking through there and seeing like Carol Ann from the TV. And then what I remember the most was the biggest like, oh shit, like the one of the best scares of the night. Uh, you know, there wasn't that many people there. It was just me and my friends and we walked straight in. You know, there wasn't much of a line in early entry. Uh, so especially being at the front of early entry, we were like, you know, uh, you know, Stranger Things slowed us down a little bit, but this is beside the point. Uh, so we get in there and the, <laughs> I'm like face to face with that static projected TV and that hand comes out at me and oh my God, I, 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 I hadn't really seen anything like that before. You know, there was the sinister scare before, but just the, the like energy that that scare actor had and just like trying to like palm your face, uh, <laughs> fucking wild. And then beautiful sets in the kitchen, with the gross steak. And, um, and the prosthetics and the, uh, I guess the mask of the uh, guy peeling his face off and getting in your face. And then this was opening nights. So they hadn't worked out their lighting kinks. That big black wall stretch, pitch black. <laughs> On opening night, I don't, know if you're, I don't know if you remember this. No, yeah, it's, it, it was really hard to walk through that. Like I, I remember specifically going through that. I'm like, I can't see nothing. Yeah, like they could be like right in front of me and I have no, I can't see the people who are directly in front of my face, can't see shit. And then of course, out of that darkness comes the dude barreling over the side, scared the shit out of me. Uh, and then the the scene with the tree branch coming through the kid's room, you know, at that point I was a lot more like set oriented, I guess. And so just seeing these sets like, oh, holy shit, they did that well. Uh, you know, because, you know, this movie is a bit, I'd say it's probably one of the more difficult properties that they've ever had to translate. I, I don't know, obviously, I don't know how hard of a time they already had with it. But I'm just assuming that, because it's, it's more of a, you know, it's a Spielberg, Hooper family movie, I guess you could even call it. So it's like finding those tidbits that to really exploit, they did a phenomenal job. And then, you know, got to speed it along here, but, um, you know, the rest of that going into the light and seeing the clown, phenomenal scare actor. If you're watching this, you did an amazing job. You were great at that, like, limp, dangly thing. Great job. Uh, and then, you know, under the bed scare, f freaked me the fuck out. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, and then that puppet. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Like, literally stunning recreation of that scene which i really want that, wanted that to probably see. was the same puppet they used in ash versus evil dead too just refaced it oh shit really yeah because it had the same similar long neck and everything oh that's awesome yeah so that's so cool I they about, did, I mean, that didn't look anything like it I know. they probably just you know toned it down a little bit it wasn't as long as a neck or anything Right. But I would assume that was probably, they probably have pieces where they take it off. But I mean, it was as big as the last, you know, the same one as Ash vs. Evil Dead. So if they rethemed that, they were good at doing that. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I think one of the scariest scenes in any maze, um, the, the uh, coffin scene in the pool. Oh my God, when I tell you I never run faster in my entire life. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big dude. I don't run that quick. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, put me in that room, make me run the hundred meter and give you same bowl to run for his money. Uh, <laughs> booked it out of there. 
And, uh, you know, those also those massive skull puppets where they just, in the beginning of the event in particular, they were pretty liberal with their uh, use of the spray guns. So I came out of there just drenched and like shaking. And I was like that fucking amazing. I did the calculations and over my, by the way, I went 2018, I went from one night in 2017 to 11 in 2018. Um, I went through Poltergeist upwards of 26 times. You probably, <laughs> you may hold the record for the most walkthroughs that season, maybe. Unless someone else I is out there. Hold the record. I think pretty easily because it, it was my thing because it was, it was my favorite maze in the back lot. And, um, you know, I got there early entry every single time and I went through it about three times each each time I went through there. It was just like, yeah! You just see the team members looking at you like, this kid again, really? I know, like some of them like knew me and they were like, how's it going, man? <laughs> the scare um, actors you're walking through are like, really, this kid again? This kid's got issues. Yeah, seriously. Um, and then let's see, you know, first purge, uh, moving on, great maze. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't top notch, but it wasn't supposed to be, you know? Um, and I know they've done purge a lot, but I, for what it was, I thought it was pretty solid. They had some good close quarter scares in there. Um, mannequin room fucking scary uh, <laughs> i don't care what you say that shit was scary um let's see what was my favorite scare in that one is when he slit the girl's throat and the water came out at you oh my god i totally forgot the fucking <laughs> yeah uh, the first night i walked through there i don't think any of anybody else around me got the water jet and i got it directly center mass like the whole water pump and i was wearing this hawaiian shirt and so he just stayed there for the rest of the night, just like a like someone just shot me with like a super soaker. <laughs> um, and then let's see, what else was in the back lot? Oh, uh, we got Horrors of Blumhouse too. Uh, I think this was yeah, this had to be my least favorite maze in any of the uh, in any of the years I've been. Uh, you know. It, not great IP selection. There wasn't much John could do. It wasn't his fault. You know, I, I, you know, he was talking about it on Twitter. He didn't have a very wide selection of movies to pick from. And, uh, you know, there's always duds. Don't, you know, you can't win them all, especially with fucking amazing mazes like Poltergeist that year. Gotta forgive him for the duds. Um, uh, uh, let's see. After that, uh, I was in the middle of Toxic Sick Tunnel and uh, right when the event started. So seven o'clock, Toxic Sick Tunnel, saw the scare actors come barreling down at you. I was dead center in the tunnel. Just the lights come on. You're like, fuck. <laughs> and, um, and I, you know, um, not a whole lot different from the year prior, but I think the addition of black lights honestly helped it a lot. And uh, the scare actors had some really good energy that year. I mean, there was one night, I think it was 2018, where um, we were walking through, I think I was with like uh, Josue. Uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was with Josue and Thomas and uh, Tim. And I think you were there too. When uh, the dude, I don't, I don't know if it was this night, but this dude uh, literally like ran and jumped off of the fucking wall. Do you remember that? I remember that. Yes, I, I remember that. That was that took parkour and haunting to a whole new level. <laughs> Dude came just flying at us off the goddamn wall, and I was just like, "Yeah, fuck yeah! This is the energy I want to see." <laughs> I thought we were at a WWE event. Someone about to hit a Superman punch on us. Seriously, like someone comes at you with like a fucking steel chair. <laughs> um, let's see. Next, uh, I went into Trick or Treat. Uh, I love this movie so much. And I think they did a pretty solid job. You know, the use of American werewolf puppets and that was really good. Hit you from behind on those. That scared the fuck out of me. Um, Mommy Q never fails with mazes. They always do a good job there. Exactly. Like, I, I mean, I don't have the most experience, but the, every single time it's been at least pretty solid, you know? And then of course, smashed it both other years with the shining and killer clowns but that's those are for other videos well one we already talked about but um go check out part one uh, <laughs> a little plug a little shameless plug a little shameless plug 
Um, let's see, uh, heading back up the escalators, we went to Terra Tram uh, and Terra Tram. Hollywood um, Harry's Dread Time Stories. Harry. So I didn't see, I never saw 2016s, but I knew the backstory, you know, I've been doing my research and whatnot. And um, pretty good. I mean, for what it was, you know, it was the same Terra Tram route as the year prior and the year prior, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they may do, and like, Hollywood Harry's a really cool character. And I like what they did with the um, stories. Of, by the end of the event, I had the whole uh, two, three minute video memorized. I'd be like reciting it <laughs> while we were going through. Uh, do put Dr. Seuss to shame. Those are some hot bars he was written. Um, but uh, yeah, and I thought it was just overall really solid. Um, Let's see, anything else to comment about that? Oh, uh, I had some pretty cool interactions, particularly on that last night uh, with, uh, with uh, all of us hanging out uh, with TLEV. Uh, oh, they knew one of the scare actors and we had some pretty cool interactions with them at the very end of the maze. Um, let's see, uh, what after that? Uh, what was Parisian? Um, Universal Monsters. Oh my God, how could I forget? This is up there on my top five. Uh, and it was my number one for a good chunk of 2018 until I poltergeist kind of edged it out a little bit. Um, oh, I don't think there's a whole lot you can even say. I mean, the amount of detail. You can detail it as much as you want. You can watch all the videos as much as you want, but unless you went through it in person, there's no justice to this maze that can be done with it other than you had to see it in person. Exactly. There's just <laughs> no words can convey how gorgeous that maze is. And Slash fucking killed it. Like with scoring that, uh, he went above and beyond with those scores. Like that was really amazing. Um, and all of the use of blacklight on the facade and just how cool the atmosphere was even outside the maze, you know, when you're in line and shit with all the music and like, you see the fire towers off in the distance and not to mention black walls in that maze were very, very little minimal. And when yeah. they were there, they were used pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Like especially with that scene with the invisible man. I mean, that, oh. that scene was executed so well. Oh my God. Like that's one of the most inventive, like I wouldn't call it a scare, but just effect set. mostly effects and then really got on the use of the uh, um, the screens you know uh, with Frankenstein jumping out of the projector which was so cool um, and really scared the shit out of me um, uh, um, let's see the last about that maze? the last uh, property was Halloween 4 Halloween 4 uh, pretty solid I mean Michael Myers you know not you don't need to say much more than that michael fucking myers man you know halloween 4 is one of my favorite in the series it's like my third favorite i think um and uh they really executed that one really really well um you know there was like that was one of the scariest mazes i think i've ever been through just for the sheer amount of scares they packed in to such a not that long maze and like they really just kind of did not let you let up. And a lot of the scares, in particular, um, you know, you're coming down the corridor and you see the dog like disemboweled on the floor. And then you turn the corner and there is no room in between that door where Michael comes out of and you. Like it is close quarters, a lot of those scares. And that's what really just knocked it out of there for me. Now, now you're looking at it in a new COVID world and you're just like, well, Maybe we could back it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not. It's terrifying in a diff in a different way. You could throw some, <laughs> you could throw some plexiglass right there. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but that one was really amazing, and the scare actors there, spot on. I mean, it's got two of my favorite scenes. Obviously, that gas station scene is so great. Uh, the very beginning, oh, yeah. and the the scene where they're at the uh, electrical uh, power plant. That right. was a dope scene. Uh, really amazing set design with the you know that whole uh area and then oh not to mention the uh the trick-or-treaters with the little cans the shaker cans 
that made me duck a lot more times than I would like to admit. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Halloween 4, solid, solid, solid. Solid mazes, man. So let's dive a little bit into these scare zones, man. This year we had, that year we had five. Obviously, we talked a little bit. You talked about Toxic Tunnel. Um, but we also had uh, Holidays in Hell, Trick or Treat, uh, Monster Mac Masquerade, and Hell's Harvest. Let's start with Holidays in Hell, man. Obviously, we knew this one became a maze uh, last season due to its popularity. Uh, really well executed as a maze as well. Uh, talk to me about Holidays in Hell. What were your thoughts going through that? Obviously, that was what uh, intros you to the Metro lot. What are your thoughts on Holidays in Hell? Holidays in Hell. So this was, you know, later into the night. So it was like dark because, you know, it's obviously not on when you're in there in early entry. So I, I thought this was just a really beautiful display of, uh, of what John Murdy could really do in that, um, in that space. And uh, it was really well executed. I like how they like lengthened the scare zone, especially coming from Urban Inferno. It was, it was kind of a, it was like a Z pattern kind of, but they really like got into the work, those corners and got that extra mileage out of the space they had. And uh, the way they did that with the, um, uh, you know, Dia de los Muertos um, little like tunnel area with the black light, so cool. Um, uh turkey lurkey with the like little gobbler thing <laughs> that was a fan uh, favorite character man dude he was a, he was way more effective than i ever thought he would have been um and uh you know the cinco de mayo scene was pretty funny um i love uh the saint patty's day scene because they're playing shipping out to boston by uh dropkick murphy's as you're walking through it so that was cool yeah yeah that was a really cool scene too that scare actor uh, played with the fog really well too. He would like hide in that a lot and kind of use the obstacles and to kind of just like come out of nowhere, <laughs> like right in front of you. Um, really solid job. Did they have um, ghillie suits in uh, Holidays in Hell, or was that the one year they? No, that it? was uh, wow. that was All Hallows Evil, I think. All Hallows Evil. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, the Easter Bunny, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> scary scary as hell not only the mask but um that performer uh killed it just was, murdered it that scares uh, always feels like a maze so that was kind of like a preview to what we were going to get the next the next year let's just add some music by figure and it's good right exactly and it and it really felt really similar to the maze yeah because you know the tight little areas and whatnot um but yeah holidays in hell really solid um trick-or-treat Trick or treat, uh, you know, I what to say about these uh, intro scare zones. They're not always my favorite just because of, it feels really open and there's not a whole lot of props. But uh, what I will say about trick or treat though is little lack of Sam. I was kind of hoping for a little more Sam, but uh, really, really fun scare actors and really awesome scare money too. Um, I think that was probably one of the better scare movies we've ever had. It was a lot more theatrical than it normally is. Really solid. And, um, you know, scare actors, good energy, pretty good costumes, scary, scary. <laughs> Those kids, the trick-or-treaters, uh, they knew how to work their shit. And, uh, yeah, it was great. I loved in Trick-or-Treat, too. They also had some scenes that you didn't get to see in the maze. Like, you got to see the the werewolves like half transformed but still human whereas oh, in the maze yeah. yeah in the maze they had them either fully transformed or as still a human but they had like contacts and stuff on them this one you got to see like them their faces are werewolves and their hands are werewolves but their body is still human so they're still transforming which i thought was cool yeah that was yeah, yeah it was really nice that they got to like expand on the maze with the scare zone and like fill in the gaps of where they missed and yeah i thought it was a really good execution um this one comes out right out of uh, Universal Monsters. Obviously, Monster Masquerade was interesting concept for this. Uh, you had all the monsters dressed up as other monsters and w roaming around and having a big ball. Uh, what were your thoughts on walking after walking out of a stunning maze of Universal Monsters going into Monsters Masquerade? I thought that that was a really great way to kind of like, you know, get you back into the park. Uh, it was a uh, the characters were pretty. So I mean, oh my. Fucking saying they're always on point. <laughs> they always kill it. 
In particular, what I thought was really cool was um, Phantom. I think he was modeled after uh, Mask of the Red Death, like some illustrations with that. Um, and uh, I mean, him in particular, he almost kicked me right in the fucking face one time. And uh, that was awesome. Like, I, I shit you not, his still got real close. But that was so cool. I was like, honestly, you kicked me in the face. I, I wouldn't be that mad. <laughs> It's like it happens, but um, uh, but yeah, just really, really great and really beautiful like sets too, and like the whole atmosphere of it was really great. And the way the the scare actors were kind of like playing into their characters with their like movements, a bit like ballroom dancey, I really thought that was a great touch. Uh, and the last one, obviously, was the front gate, Hell's Harvest. Uh, any thoughts on that? I mean, that was obviously the one you walk into and walk out of, so. Okay, I, you know what, I have some, I have some stories with this one in particular, uh, one scare actor in particular. So on the whole first, great maze. I love, obviously when there's chainsaws and you get that gasoline going, I, I mean, come on, that's, that's it right there. You get the smell of the chainsaw. Smell. You know you're at HHN when you smell that and you hear that. When you smell that, you hear that rawr, off in the distance, and some people fucking screaming their heads off and chainsaws scraping. Always a good time. Really, really awesome. Uh, I like the concept a lot, and I think the you know what minimal like set dressing there was was pretty solid. Um, I like the whole lore behind it, and I and um, scare actors. One in particular, Hatchet fucking Hannah. Oh my God. Okay. So I was talking about how I was at the event, uh, like 11 some odd times. Uh, but, uh, basically, uh, I, uh, a few nights in the event, I would just take out my phone and I'd like walk up and down like trick or treat and, uh, hell's harvest, just live streaming and just kind of like, you know, hanging out and like getting some scares and filming some other people get scared and like, just, you know, people like typing in the chat and whatnot, just to hang out kill some time. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I started having these interactions with um, uh, the scare actor, you know, on the hatchet Hannah on the, um, on the collar. And uh, we, uh, you know, we kept having interactions and like, and shit like that. And she was just great. Always fucking like running up to me and like screaming at me. Like one time I was on the phone with one of my friends cause she was, or my cousin, she was trying to come in and like find out where I was. And then she ran up to me and screamed into the microphone of my phone. I was spinning around trying to hear my cousin and she followed me in a complete circle. Um, and then uh, one night I was hanging out in the scare zone and she was on break and she came out and we, we like talked for a few minutes and well, I was super fucking chill. Uh, get her on the podcast. Was, I haven't been in contact with her since, but if you want to come on the podcast, that would be fucking awesome. Awesome. Uh, if you're watching this. Um, but yeah, and that, and that was uh, kind of like I was talking in last episode where I had that interaction with the Freddy. You know, I had a few other interactions that night in 2017 and I had a lot more in 2018. And it's just shit like that, that like makes the event, you know? It really, uh, uh, it brings that like human element to it and, it's, and it just makes it so much more uh, like light and fun. And uh, you know, and like when you get to interact with scare actors like that, it's just, and that, that's kind of like what it's all about to me, you know, because, you know, these people are also like horror fans and love what they're doing and like, you know, appreciate the craft and whatnot. So, yeah. Seems like, Will, you had a solid 2018, obviously going uh, 11 times this time around, hitting Poltergeist 26 times. Uh, <laughs> solid year for you. Uh, another great year. Another one in the books. Um so, yeah, I mean, it sounds great, but there's another event that we're going to talk about uh, in a few days on the channel uh, that we really want to come back and we're hoping does come back next season, and that is Horror Made here at Warner Brothers. Uh, I know, Will, you got a couple stories with that one, um, mm -hmm. so I I'd be happy to jump on that one with you because that was one of my favorite <laughs> events of 2018. And I think it was so well executed that I want more from Warner Brothers. So, Horror Will Made here. Walk down memory lane. Another walk down memory lane. It's going to be a Will and Anthony walk down memory lane because I have so much I can tell you about that event, man. I mean, I had such a fun time that year. But 
Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Will's Walk Down Memory Lane. Um, we are revisiting past years. We miss Haunt a lot this year, and we want you guys to have the <coughs> same feeling. If you guys had similar memories or anything, leave them down in the comments. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say about these years, uh, some memorable moments, interactions, uh, things that you remember that stood out to you the most. Uh, we would love to hear them, so put them down in the comments, and we'll be happy to read them and respond. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be aware every time we put up a new video. And, of course, follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and Knights of Horror on Twitter. Uh, until then, Will, do you have any last words you want to say to the audience? Uh, nothing, but thanks for coming. Listen to me ramble about HHN for however long this has been going on, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, see you next week. See you guys next week for some horror made here.